Eddie Van Halen and James Hetfield are my two favorite guitarists, and today we're combining two of their guitars to make the Rusty Frankenstrat. We're finishing it up today, and then I'm giving it away to one of you guys. I'll give you all the details in this episode. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified when new episodes drop. This is Trash to Thrash. For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome custom guitars. Now, I'm turning my passion into a profession by seeking out old, beat-up guitars and giving them new life, all while trying to make a profit. I'll be searching everywhere for used gear that I can re-fret, rewire, repaint, whatever it takes to make it a real shredder. This is Trash to Thrash. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Trash to Thrash. I'm your host, Mark Murray, and today we're continuing on with the Rusty Frankenstrat. This is a guitar where we're combining two guitars from my favorite two guitarists, Eddie Van Halen and James Hetfield. Both of them have huge guitar collections, but for this one, we're combining the original Frankenstrat with Hetfield's Rusty Explorer. Later this week on December 17th, I'll be randomly selecting a member of my Patreon page to win this guitar. So if you want to win this guitar, go sign up to my Patreon page over at patreon.com slash guitar guts. The link's in the description of this video. It's $10 a month and you get commercial free versions of all the videos I do, plus bonus exclusive content only for premium members, and you get access to the Guitar Guts Discord page where you can chat with like-minded guitar builders and modders. Of course, you're also automatically entered into all the guitar giveaways that I do. Stay tuned until the end of the episode because I'll be telling you about the next guitar raffle. After the Rusty Frankenstrat, I want your opinion on that one too. You can also help support Guitar Guts by visiting guitarguts.com and buying a shirt, stickers, baby clothing, kill switch, custom pick, pedal, or even a guitar. Right now I have a couple guitars available up there. The Quilted Stealth OLP MM1 is available now with a Guitar Guts kill switch, Goto tuners, and a Seymour Duncan JB pickup. I also have the 1993 Jackson King V Crackle up there where you can choose what pickups and bridge it will get, so you basically get to name your price. There's also the 1994 Jackson JSX Concept Crackle and Splatter guitar. It's blue, it's chromed out, and it's ready to ship and shred. On the last episode, I showed you how the guitar started off. We got it painted, made a rusty pick guard for it, I refretted the neck, and we started deciding what parts to use on this project. I asked you guys for suggestions on the hardware color, and you guys came through. Black was the overwhelming favorite, and I think I agree. For the hardware on this guitar, I chose to use Music Lily. They make direct replacements for strats that are affordable. The bridge seems to be of nice quality. It looks good, and it feels pretty good too. Although the tuners aren't my favorite tuners, I'm sure they're better than the stock Squire tuners, but they aren't on the level of Grover or Goto. I also got a new set of string retainers to go in the old string retainer holes. The tuners didn't line up absolutely perfect, although they were close, so I did have to fill and re-drill the holes, but at least the new tuners will cover the holes of the old tuners completely. I don't want to have dowel fills on the back of the headstock. For the nut on this guitar, I used a Floyd Rose nut. This neck had previously been modified by me to accept a Floyd Rose nut, plus I like a Floyd Rose nut, so we went ahead and used that, but it did need some further modification so that it would fit over the truss rod adjustment screw. So to do that, I used a Dremel with a sanding drum bit. This looks like it should do the trick. I just removed a little bit of the material from the center of the nut so that it would slide over the truss rod adjustment screw. And there's the headstock assembled, looking nice and clean with that black hardware, with plenty of access to the truss rod adjustment screw. I originally bought these Strat replacement string retainers and installed them, but the low E and the A strings were still sitting too high because they don't go under the string retainers. They weren't fully seating into the nut. So I added the Floyd Rose retainer, and I figured I would just leave the Strat ones on there since there'd be holes underneath them anyways. As I tightened the retainer screws, you could see the strings lower to where they are actually touching both sides of the nut and going straight into the tuners instead of at an angle. This is what it should look like. And now the nut and the headstock are fully assembled with all their hardware. I love the look of a Strat headstock with black hardware. It reminds me of the modern era Charvels. When converting a guitar to direct mount pickups, you need to make a bracket that's going to mount the pickup at the correct height or find a way to make it adjustable. For this guitar, I already had these brackets on hand that my shop assistant Ryan had made me. They'll mount directly to the guitar and then the pickup can mount to them. It happened to be the perfect height, so I didn't need to add any additional shims. 
One thing that was bothering me was these saddle adjustment screws on the bridge. I shimmed the neck one degree and it's sitting nicely, but these screws are just way too long. So I replaced them with a set of shorter set screws that will let them sit lower than the surface of the saddle so it'll be very comfortable while palm muting. And being stainless steel, they'll look cooler and they'll resist corrosion much better than the original ones. Next, I bolted everything down, tightened all the screws, wired it up, strung it up, and set it up. Now this thing's ready to shred. Are you ready for the reveal? For this guitar, we went with a clean look. No quarter, no parts in the cavities. You voted for no junk in the cavities, so that's what we went with, and this guitar looks clean. The matte black looks great. I like how the clear over the pickguard leaves a nice contrast between the matte black and the glossy rust. The blacked out hardware looks awesome, and that EMG matches the matte black on the body, so it's a perfect fit. I normally go to the EMG 81 as my standard bridge pickup. But I've tried the EMG85 in a couple guitars and it actually sounds really good. It doesn't have quite as much highs as an 81, so it sounds a little more balanced in the bridge position. The kill switch on this guitar is from Iron Age Accessories and it's a non-LED model. I felt like introducing some color into this build would kind of flavor it, and I like the way it's already got the flat black and rust look, and that's the color scheme of this guitar. So I went with no LED and just a solid black kill switch. Guys, I'm already working on the next giveaway guitar. It's gonna be another Frankenstrat. If you've been watching all the vlogs and you've already seen this guitar. It's an early 90s Fender Strat, made in Korea. You guys know I love these things. It's actually got a very similar neck to the one that's on the rusty Frankenstrat. This guitar caught my eye on Craigslist right away because it's actually the same exact model that I started playing guitar on over 20 years ago. A Fender Squire Stratocaster Bullet Series. But I need to know what color should this one be? I've done a few red Frankenstrats. I've done bumblebees, black and whites, a bunch of stealths, a green one, a couple purple and blue ones. But what should the next one be? My buddy Chuck has a blue one that was wicked, but a lighter blue or a yellow would look rad too. Let me know in the comments what color you think I should do the next Frankenstrat giveaway guitar. All right, guys, so what'd you think of the rusty Frankenstrat? Let me know down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. Tell me what you would have done differently and also let me know what color I should do the next Frankenstrat giveaway guitar. I've done red too many times so maybe blue or green could be cool or even a charcoal gray, matte black, something different. If you want to win the Rusty Frankenstrat, the only way to win it is to sign up to my Patreon page over at patreon.com slash guitar guts. Of course the link is in the description of this video. It's $10 a month and you're automatically entered into all the guitar giveaways that I do. And on December 17th, I'll be randomly selecting a member of my Patreon page to win this guitar. You can also help support Guitar Guts by visiting GuitarGuts.com and buying a shirt, stickers, baby clothing, a kill switch, a custom pick, a pedal, or even a guitar. Right now, I have a couple guitars available up there. The Quilted Stealth OLP MM1 is available now with the Guitar Guts Chrome Kill Switch, Goto Tuners, and a Seymour Duncan JB pickup. I also have the 1993 Jackson King V Crackle up there, where you can choose what pickups and bridge it'll get, so you get to name your price. There's also the 1994 Jackson JSX Concept with Crackle and Splatter. It's blue and it's chromed out, it looks awesome, and it's ready to ship and for you to shred on right now. Thanks so much for watching, hit that like button, be sure you're subscribed, and rock on my friends!
Thank you.